Okay. Welcome to the SEO show. Man walks down the street and says, Why am I stuck in the middle now? Why am I stuck in the middle now? Where's <laughs> my life is so hard? I need a photo opportunity. I want a shot of redemption. That was, a, cartoon. that was a pretty good surprise, Ryan. Welcome to the Cartoon Graveyard. This is the SEO show. Let me turn the volume down on this thing. We're back, folks. All you folks out there who have been asking, where's the, where's the SEO show? I miss, I miss it. We're back. Uh, we're actually waiting for someone else to get on the line. Right now we've got Zach Goldstein, a new member of the SEO show. Uh, my brother Zach uh, couldn't make it today, so I got another Zach. Hey, I'm, I'm happy to fill in. Um, I'm trying to get Anna on the line. Uh, she. I'm trying to send the the link to this um to the show. Mm-hmm. Anchor Anchor used to just call people and then they would answer. They removed that feature. Um, they or removed it. Switch? Now now there's just you follow the link like I sent you that link and then you just put it opened on your app. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the second link you sent me was, but that was better, and it it was yeah. Pretty um. So this is the SEO show. This is the show where we look at Google search trends. We go to trends.google.com, and we look at what people are searching for right now. We talk about those things, and then. I'm able to put those things like uh, the I'll be able to put like you know let's see what's trending right now. For example, uh, the tr- top trending search is uh, Matt Gates. I don't know who the flip that is, but I'll put him in my description, and then somebody will be searching for that, and then the our podcast will come up, and that oh! would, that's, that's what you call organic search results or organic. So finally, we got Tree on the line. Can Welcome to the show, Tree. Hello, guys. Yeah, I can hear you now. Hey. Hello, Welcome to the SEO show. We're back after a long hiatus. It wasn't that we long. stopped doing. How long? It was, was well a couple of weeks, but then we kind of took like a Christmas break, and I was also going to take a permanent break because the show depressed me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's just the nature of the news yeah i know it kind of sucks but <laughs> that's just news blues it's news blues i never heard that term but that's a good term that's very so, accurate so we've got i told i just uh told the audience uh tree that i got my brother zach couldn't make it from zach show live so we got another zach to fill in we just have them all so, lined up all a bunch of zachs we have we have a, two more zachs as a backup. <laughs> In case I go, there's more. You have a very specific uh, uh, hole that these pegs have to fit in. Yeah. I, ha- I happen to be that trait. I'm happy to fill that, that peg hole. So, thanks for being here. This is your first time. Do you, do you have a, a way to pull up trends.google.com to look at some of yeah. these search trends? I got my little laptop here. Awesome. I'm seeing the Matt Gates. I don't know I'm who that the, is. I'm seeing the 200K plus searches. Yeah. I think as a first timer, I'm just going to be wowed at these. At the numbers. numbers. Well, this is, yeah, so the ones at the very top, that's what's happening right now. And those aren't, those numbers aren't actually that large. If you go, if you keep scrolling down past like number 20 and you click load more, you'll see yesterday's numbers. And actually, 500K, that's not that much. When it starts to get into, like, 1 million to 2 million, that's, like, the real hot shit. But, yeah, we don't... Who's Matt Gates? Uh, Suggesting uh, Michael Cohen. Matt Gates? Matt Gates, a 200K searches. (laughs) I don't know who this is. I I can't really talk about this at all. Michael Cohen. 
I've heard the name Michael Cohen in the news, and I don't know who that is. I and just, I feel like that that's really letting the audience know how ignorant I am about current events by saying crazy. I don't know who that I is. I haven't really peeped at this for a, for a while, and I'm, like, not recognizing any of this. But I listen to the news, like, the Daily or whatever, like, those, like, up first whatever podcasts. But none of this, none of this was news in that in that realm. Are you seeing number two though? What is that? On the Momo, Momo so, YouTube, the challenge? Momo Suicide Challenge I feel like on YouTube. I've never heard of that. I haven't this seen is a this. Great way to vet to vet what we dive into further. Like, like you were talking about news blues before. I think we're gonna get pretty news bluesed out with some, you know, anything like halfway adjacent to Trump or anything like that. I mean, yeah. I'm open for whatever, but like seems like Matt Gates is tied to Michael Cohen, which is tied to e- Trump, which is. That's what I had. That was my suspicion. And I just don't know about a lot of that stuff. I feel like, and this is my conspiracy hat. I feel like all of this stuff is a distraction and I feel like it's, I'm better for not paying attention to it, but maybe that's just because I, so maybe that's just like justifying my ignorance. I mean, to be, to be fair to your point, that number one, uh, uh, link or whatever is a Fox news, like, it, it is from Fox News. That is the number one thing mm. that's a search. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think that's just circumstance. Washington Post is number two, and then Vox is number three. All conspiracy sites, though, or all um, fake news sites. So <laughs> fake, news. fake news. So this Momo thing. Yeah, this I'm is a really sure. creepy. Yeah, it's two. a really creepy photo creepy. of like. A, a girl, a little girl with a gigantic, scary mouth. I can actually make that face with my own, yeah, with my own can. face. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the, I've seen the face. <laughs> this might be my thumbnail for this this episode of the show. It's pretty shocking. It's just it's pretty. Like... Hot. What? What? No, you it? just a side like a... of a side by side of you and that face doing a challenge. That's the. Thumbnail. All right, I'll try to. So the cre- Hold on, I'm gonna read the first paragraph from the daily dot about what the frick this is a creepy photo of a female sculpture with a long black hair bulging eyes and grin that stretches across her face has ricocheted around the internet for the past (laughs) few years but the character named momo has recently begun to infiltrate youtube videos meant for kids and has apparently been promoting suicide and other dangerous activities yeah uh tristan harris actually uh, he posted something about that on twitter did not realize it had to do with this challenge but he mentioned, he was like, actually, oh, man, I kind of want to find the tweet now. What's, like, the actual details? Like, do you... That, um, it was promoting on, like, YouTube Kids uh, directions for suicide. Wow. Yeah. And so, like, Tristan Harris's angle was just like, oh, so you think that, you know, you shouldn't actually... Let, let me actually find it. Hold on. Um, I don't want to... Um, so their challenge is they challenge Where, kids to do Did you scroll things. did you scroll down on Yeah and see it with the dog? chicken legs? Yeah, we're <laughs> Yeah. This it's like crazy. the face and then it's like some boobs and some chicken legs coming from them. <laughs> okay, I just want It's to a very that. extreme sculpture. Like I understand why this, this is so image spooky. is so powerful. So Tristan Harris's thing this morning was the cost of Silicon ba- Valley believing that they are just neutral tools giving people what they want without considering the consequences. Quote, unquote. A mom found videos on YouTube kids that give children instructions on suicide. So that's what I saw this morning. And I can't yeah, so believe that this is, this is what it is. I've, I haven't run into this. Like, I've been in YouTube, around YouTube, and I've also watched a lot of, like, kids' YouTube stuff. Dude. But there's just so much. I, I haven't seen this, though. Well, this is, like, a either. new – this is a new focus, like – I feel like the public eye is kind of turning to analyze like content that like who is you guys are probably oh no I know but like I yeah who's the they, YouTube dude? has been, been who's the famous guy yeah they've been going after like bad ch- children's content for the last like few Peppa years Pig, yeah Peppa Pig. Pig there was like finger family yeah there was there's like a bunch of like garbage garbage kids programs that are like kind of violent and i downloaded a whole bunch of them i was i was loving it actually 
it was so like the content was so crazy i I made some playlists of like the craziest stuff and then i downloaded them because i knew they were gonna get deleted and they did Mm -hmm. so now i have like i have like a hard drive of like a bunch of really weird kids youtube stuff that i I have a treasure now now that's been wiped off the net it's pretty it's definitely probably a treasure also like the content too is produced by algorithms or something yeah and that's like the whole other it's thing. not it's i don't like, think it's like created by algorithms it's like i feel like it's, it's like people it's like in in non-english speaking countries yeah. just like looking at search terms and trends and sort of just mashing them all together in just like a sort of you know when you go uh, you you pick all the soda pops when you're sure. getting your soda. It's like yeah, they just mix together like Spider Man, Frozen, yeah, Batman. Well, that's what it is. It's like an assistant, scary it an, clown. Yeah, it's like a it's like a <laughs> hyper like hashtag like parsing a data set or whatever that like that just combines all these things, shakes it, shakes it up in a box, and then releases the content because yeah. it's like really like they produce it really quickly is like another thing and you can't keep up with it there's also like maybe a, I, I mean i notice there's like lots of really scary stuff too and i wonder if kids just like sort of respond to the scarier stuff mm. have you guys heard of the obama sonic backpack no no that sounds crazy so like this is like this is like very simple. like if you search like obama sonic harry potter backpack this was like this weird thing in the fashion world where like they were just kind of like it's almost like the materialization of what you're talking about anna where like oh, everything yeah, yeah. is yeah. just pushed together yeah and so like yeah, they were that's just exactly like, what this oh. is and I, the funny part is like i just feel like the people that made it you know forgive me if i sound ignorant or whatever but like maybe someone in china just didn't really know what these that's like exactly franchises nah, were. yeah that's exactly and, it them together or something i don't know but i i I think think. (laughs) it's a really cool backpack it's honestly (laughs) awesome so it's yeah because actually what you're saying reminds me of like um i forget what i saw i think it was that oh it was just uh, i had a friend that went to japan or china recently i forget exactly where it was but they were they had like an insta story of them just like walking through a, a mall and then just like picking up all the streetwear and like reading the the words on it and it was just mashups of like things that mm-hmm. are right. like western cool but then like just don't make sense and like obviously it's like i don't know so i think and it, I think it has its own, its own intrinsic value. I feel like people like covet that because it's like so it's like um like having an ironic t-shirt or something. Yeah, so, for sure. So I think that like that in streetwear is a thing maybe. Um yeah. but it's weird. But in this kids in the kids program stuff it's it's programming. It's really It's weird. baby hacking is like what I call it. Yeah. It's just like To me it's like a data <laughs> like the data of content making like yeah it's just like everything and like there's no context and everything is just a palette to be like remixed you know yeah and i swear like this the idea that this like scary girls in here and like i noticed there's like lots of videos that you i don't know if they're still out there but like bad babies like babies doing the wrong thing like yeah like like violence i feel like maybe appeals to the babies are on some some like really like base it's instinctual weird. level maybe yeah, and they want to cl- they might want to click it. like you know how like on twitter like we're attracted to like yeah. disasters and bad things happening that's like we their, that's their... i think i think it's like <laughs> it's it's such news. a yeah i think it's like such a fundamental thing for us to be like concerned about that's like crazy. danger danger that like yes. i think the sprinkle of danger or violence in these baby videos is what gets them to click on one video rather than another. That's just my pet theory. That though. is true. Well, it seems, oh, I'm not going to say it's true, but it is interesting that, like, they are selecting their own a baby echo chamber, and they keep falling into these holes with, like, maybe, like, scarier and scarier content. I actually don't know if that's what's happening, but it would be an interesting thing to observe. And, like, if they actually are going, because all of these characters that are being mixed up in this, like, data, like, mashed potato like mound is like 
like figures that are important to them, like whether it's Frozen or Spider Man or yeah. Peppa Pig or whatever. So of course, if there's any harm being uh, put up put upon like Peppa Pig, they want to know yeah. what's going on. Like, oh no, Peppa Pig. But <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if um, there's something about like the horror. Aspect, I, I, just like that maybe is even pleasurable the same way that we are you know have i think it's like the i movies. think it's the car crash logic like we slow down for a car crash because we want to see what the what happened mm. like even if it's but the violent. difference between an adult and a baby is that an adult understands that it's like media and a baby do they what do they think it is do you think that they what do you mean do they think that that's reality like, do they think that it's make like they, these are people that mm. still believe in Santa Claus, right? And if yeah. Santa Claus died, they would be upset. I don't know. They, I, they, I they definitely think a, a young child definitely just like is coming in as like, for lack of a better term, like law. Yeah. Or or what reality is? So. What was that long? Law. No, uh, oh, law. Yeah. Or yeah just reality like, just like yeah reality yeah yeah so i think especially a beloved character getting hurt or something that's definitely just the brain of like oh man this is really happening in this character yeah yeah or, i don't know but wait yeah. i got a question so so there's this trend happening with all this bad stuff and all this sort of like mal malgorithm <laughs> malgorithm <laughs> wow you can you have some great terms Malgorithm in and of itself. Um, then YouTube and Google has YouTube Kids, which seems yes. to be this siloed app, not actually yeah. a website. Because I tried to search it. I'm on my laptop. I'm trying to search it. It's just a YouTube yeah, app. and it just brings you to like the you know Probably. wannabe like App Store splash page thing. Mm. Um, so what's on here? that's okay for them i guess it's like yeah from what i can see it's like syndicated like dc kids there's yeah. a kids bop thing there's a uh, like the angry birds pig guy it's like basically a filtered youtube that yeah. that google like they created this like collection of content in order to silo children out of like obviously like actual youtube but the problem is is like people are still creating maybe the regulations around who's making content for YouTube kids, even though it's owned by Google in the same way that YouTube is, mm. the regulations for those barriers are questionable. So like who is making the content for YouTube kids? Well, wait, I'm, con you know? I'm confused. Is the, is the crazy stuff that we're talking about? Making yeah. it on YouTube kids? Yes. I actually don't know. Do you yes. know that? Yes. You're, really? You're I haven't been sure. on it. Because here it says, uh, a, a quote unquote, Tristan Harris, he was referring to this when he said the thing about Silicon Valley and being a neutral tone, all that stuff. He said, a mom found videos on YouTube kids that gave children mm -hmm. instructions for suicide. Okay. Yeah. So that's where they're, that's why it's so alarming because it's like you give your child your iPad and log them into this place where you think that you can like keep them without kind of monitoring them. And then, meanwhile, they're, like, watching suicide videos, you know? Like, and you would never know because it's called YouTube Kids. Oh, man. So that's super scary. Yeah. See, I didn't think it was that bad. I actually until, didn't either. Until that I didn't... moment. Until what you just said about it being also siloed into the YouTube Kids app. Because that just feels yeah. like, you know, you got, like... Yeah. Your little boy or girl has like the little like i mm -hmm. mm -hmm. case on, and she's just hanging and you're like out. cleaning, making then, some sandwiches, yeah, and, like whatever. You know they're fine. Maybe take a nap. Yeah. They'll be like watching content. It's fine. And then creep it's up on there. <laughs> this oh, creep man. walks I through, mean, like walks rough. through the door. Yeah, like it's really bad. Wow. I'm a fan of Momo. I'm going to probably look into some of these videos. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's the, next, yeah. what's the next? I don't know. Like, I'm looking at all these things. I'm going to just run down the list. Orlando Bloom with 100K. The Masked Singer, 100K. Mike Bibby, 100K. Detective oh, wait, Pikachu, 50K. Yesterday. That's why. Is that should why? We, should we go? Did they say yesterday or was it two days ago? Uh, probably two days ago. That's two days ago. Should we get check to see if there's any big numbers on that sort of event? 
Yeah, I know that the Let's green check book out had some like some mega controversy. Ten million like, searches for the ninety first Academy Awards. The biggest news so those that are some I big heard, num- those are some big clicks. The biggest news that I heard about the Oscars was that uh, the Green Book was uh, nominated mm-hmm. for what a be- best something, best picture. I don't know. It won. It won, and Spike Lee <laughs> yeah, got best literally picture. like walked out of the Oscars, which was. I didn't hear that. Yeah, because um, I didn't see it. I don't want to get too into. Did anybody it, here see it? I didn't watch it. I just heard. I it. yeah, I watched. I watched the clips like the daily. You mean the Green ahead. Book? Have you seen Green Book? I did. Oh, I saw Green Book. How was it? Garbage or what? It. I think I share the same kind of criticism everybody else has, which is like any. I'm sorry, you cut out, Zach. Oh, wait, any me? kind of. Any kind of. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Sometimes yeah. you talk and it's like, how did it boom? Oh, no. And you turn into like a robot. But it's oh, fine. I think it's I think it's because I turned my phone. Oh. Does that hurt? Right, I'm going to do it right now. Do it right now. Do it right now. No, no it's good. I think it's random. All right. You can't help it. So you're um, saying any kind of. I was going to say any, any kind of like movie. Okay. So the, I'm sorry. Let me back up. So the, the criticism that everybody had of this film was that there's a couple points. One is that. It's talking about racism, but it's told from sort of like a white character's perspective, which I personally don't think is a a bad mark against the film. I think the I think the thing is that the movie is a boring format. I think people are tired of like the road movie of two people getting in a car and like they don't they don't quite work at first, but because they're forced into these close quarters, they'll eventually sort of like you know gain a characteristic from each other one is going to learn one thing from the other and the other is going to learn the other thing from the other and they both walk away more holistic than when they first arrived like that kind of formula i feel like everybody was like really this again this is a movie that could have been made like 20 years ago and like we're still like anyway go ahead yeah 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 yeah. sorry i don't i didn't mean to interrupt you no no no, keep going i was like so excited to tell you that when you said 10 years ago or whatever this was a movie Basically, the format of this movie was a movie from, like, 1989. Mm-hmm. And that is the thing that people really bothered people, like Spike Lee. So it's called Driving Miss Daisy, which was another movie of basically, from what I know, it's, like, a white lady needed, um, she was, like, older, so she started to need some help. So then they hired a black man to be her driver, and basically on her deathbed, she reconciles with like this racial divide and she's like you're my best friend and it's like interesting that to hear your perspective because like from what I've heard is that because when I okay I'll tell you what I thought initially I was like this Mm -hmm. is an important movie here did you see this movie I I saw this movie yeah okay I'm glad you guys both saw it I didn't see it yeah and I thought it was an important movie only because like as some like as a as a Hispanic person, as, as a person of color, like these sort of movies that just profile people of color in like a different way. And like, um, you know, it's really, it's really, it's really important. It's really special to see. Yeah, go but out and support is, it. But the thing is, is that when you look at these sort of movies, like even down to like, um, uh, I was going to say the color purple or just like any of these kind of like, um, Crash is what African I thought American of when I heard about this. And, like white American person reconciling oh. any sort of racial divide. Like I was listening to Still Processing, and they basically broke it down like hardcore. Mm-hmm. And um, it's always on like the white person's terms, and yeah. it's very rarely on the African American person's terms. They're usually the help, or they're usually this, or they're usually that, or getting paid. And so that reconciliation has nothing to do with them meeting in the middle. There's always a power dynamic. And it's yep. usually in the favor of the white person. So really, it's kind of like this story that they were saying that the Academy is like really kind of just obsessed with this narrative of it like plays into like white guilt and like these sort of things of like, oh, you know, because even um, what was the one movie that Oprah was in? It wasn't The Color of Purple, but there was a different one. Um but regardless, like, even at the end of that movie, for instance, when it came out, it was like, it was this sort, sort of same movie. But at the end of the movie, 
the African American character is actually like jobless in a more precarious situation than where she'd begun after. I wish I could remember the name of the movie, but regardless, it's like these sort of movies have a, like a lot of problems, and Green Book also did because it was from. It had a lot of things wrong with it. And well, there's one. Because, there's also one more aspect, which yeah. is that the family that knows the real life mm-hmm. version mm-hmm. of that character mm-hmm. said, "said now I I, I kind of thought this was a little this is." This goes back to like the purity, yeah. the purity of documentary and biopics. When you select yeah. to do a biopic, like I think part of the job of that filmmaker is to tell the most accurate portrait they can, but still in service to a story that in at the end sort of like communicates the point they're trying to make. It utilizes all the real world elements, but at the same time, they are it is a form of art and there should be a little bit of room of a wiggle room for fiction to happen and for jokes to be made and for words to be said that weren't necessarily said in the 1960s or whatever. But like the, was it when this takes place? When does this take place in the sixties? I guess. Uh, right. No, it, Jeez. No, 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 no. I'm uh, still thrown off. Maybe it's the fifties. Like the fifties. Yeah. It was like in the, in the deep, like, I know those cars are beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, it was, it was it was the one of the worst times for like between like the segregation and everything. Yeah, right, right, right. So the just to conclude this thing so that there was like some controversy over the fact that the main <clears throat> uh, after African-American character basically didn't know his family in the movie and was like a strange half or something. Mm-hmm. In reality the family had spoken to him every week when he was on the road that they were actually very tight blah 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 and like that was as far as i got in terms of that sort of like knowledge of why they were kind of mad about it they had said yeah. that just the relationship between the family and him was like wrecked but it really wasn't and i thought okay but and i can understand being a family and totally being cross about that like i get yeah. that for sure but at the same time, just as like an audience member who doesn't know any of these people and was just sort of like watching the story, it made sense that the guy was sort of closed off and very sort of like didn't trust anybody. And so, you know, he was sort of looking for human connection everywhere because they were trying to give, you know, a, an hour and a half movie or a two hour movie like motivation. So like, yeah to have all this extra stuff like that's when the director stepped in was like we're gonna prune this yeah that's and we're gonna do it in a way and so like i actually thought that that wasn't so bad but i get it i get the biopic i get the whole thing of it trying to be accurate so but hand, hands up in the air so I what i heard about that was a similar scenario but the thing is is what i heard is that the family of the pianist actually like they said that they didn't have that relationship. That's what you're saying too. Like to the point that they weren't even like friends. It was like an employee employer relationship. Like all of this, like bonding and mm-hmm. like all this extra. And that's what you're saying. It's like in the service of the movie. But the thing is, is like they completely fabricated a whole entire yeah. relationship where there wasn't one. And also it was again, it was the same thing of like a white director, a white cast, like main character movie, there taking, you go. taking the story of an African American person yep. and monetizing and being able to like you know take the wealth from that, and that is just like a rep- repetition of the same problem over and over and over again, um, but of just like you know like uh, co-opting like black experiences and black lives or whatever and and, yeah. and monetizing it i had no i actually now i'm fully on board this side because i had no idea that the even the core relationship of the two main actors yeah was like uh, you know as you say like fabricated or like totally embellished like if it is to that degree i just personally haven't read it but i totally believe everybody like that's just like fully off the <laughs> yeah off the i was cliff. so yeah. bummed out when i that's heard that really I was... sad and i watched the film and i really like i enjoyed it it's so easy to enjoy it's yeah. easy to enjoy as like as like a road movie they do yeah. a good balance of like jokes and whatever and i'm sure through the lens of like 
other people besides myself it could be a different watching experience but like i actually thought it was like an enjoyable movie mm-hmm. it's totally ruined now <laughs> That's how I thought. I really, oh, no. I was yeah. like telling people that would ask me, I'm like, it's a good movie. You should see it. And like, when I heard this backstory, I was like, it's kind of just like, you know, blues news. Cause like, you Such can't enjoy anything. Like I, I felt ignorant for like not knowing this before going in the movie. And it's like, fuck, everything requires research, I guess. It really stinks. Aye, aye, aye. But, um, but at the same time, it was like, it's true. It was created kind of more of like a comedy, which is even almost weirder for such a serious kind of topic. So, I mean, that's like another thing that I thought was kind of strange. Mm-hmm. But because the director, do you know who it is? No, who's the director? Uh, film directed by Peter Farrelly. What movies? Mm. I, th- I think I heard he did um, Fruitvale Station, I think, is what I think he did before. I yeah, it. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh man, he did. Oh my god, he did Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> dumb and Dumber. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. so that's what I heard. I was like, holy shit, this is the director of Dumb and Dumber, and there's something about Mary. I mean, again, so those are those are all kind of like those are good movies. Those are all kind of like people getting to know each other movies or people on a journey. I mean, you could argue pretty much every character. Me, myself, and Irene but... is kind of exactly that. Yeah. You know? Wow. They have to drive across country on that yep, motorcycle. Dumb and dumb. But then to make it... Holy like cow. Movie. All he does is do movies about driving across <laughs> the country. <laughs> well, I get that guy. <laughs> How is he getting away with this? Movie. Which makes this that much more embarrassing. <laughs> we need a car Great. with five wheels. There's yeah, something about Mary yeah, doesn't fun. have that. I was, I was, oh, oh my god! How? What? What would be? One, what would be think? your yeah. road movie? I I like the road movie idea though. I gotta say, you know, <laughs> sort of ragging on him for it. I like that it's a natural narrative. You know what it I mean? Is. Like there's a beginning and end. It's like a. But this buffle. is the thing. So I thought. I thought also, at, you know, this is like small potato. I know we're still like harping on this, but like I know this is small potatoes compared to the the racial issues and the inaccurate inaccuracies of the bio and whatever, but like the movie did feel like it wasn't challenging anybody. And then right next to that film you have. Yeah. I don't know. I thought the favorite was pretty interesting. I thought it made an audience like use a muscle as opposed to just sort of like watching and eating popcorn kind of a relaxation film, I guess, even though, even though this movie is attempting to basically literally, you know, look directly in the face of racism, regardless of all of the, I mean, oh, but it's it, so but, ruined in, in that was same it, way. Um, but, what were the other ones in that category? I thought it was also Roma and also so Spike Lee's movie. Roma and Bye. Black Panther. Yeah, and Black Panther. So, like, you have pretty much every shade of oh my god and also wasn't a lady gaga yeah yeah a star is born as well black Black so many music films i'm just i'm just gonna say bradley cooper because he had a 55 million searches (laughs) just so i can throw that in there yeah so so, (laughs) so actually that was why um uh spike lee also kind of like dipped out in protest because his movie, when uh, Driving Miss Daisy was also up for an Academy, it also won against his. So oh it was like my a god! Of his like PTSD, considering uh, like because I forget the I was it the what movie was it actually did it lose against? I think it was Do the Right Thing, maybe, which was mm-hmm. like an extremely important like radical movie. And so he was just like, fuck this joint, you know? Best picture, 1989. I mean, his movie was was the most sort of like, you know, take a look at this issue and in such an interesting and unique way. And it probably, I mean, I kind of want to hear about the accuracies of his film as well. And I want to see what, you know, liberties he probably took. I'm sure he took a few. I'm sure it was Black way Clansman? less... Uh, yeah, Black Klansman. I'm sure, like, there's something there that was, like, not 100% on. Sure, sure. But, 
I think there's just there's so much baggage and the fact that it's a white director is also that is a real thing and like I don't know so all of this is very very yeah. clumped together but yeah. I just want to say Rami Malek mm-hmm. with two million searches mm-hmm. uh, did you did you what see you did you see what is that Bohemian Rhapsody? Rhapsody Queen the Queen movie Bohemian oh Rhapsody. I have it no Wait, I just I wanted to talk about this with Zach for a sec because it won for best editing, and there's like a joke going around that its editing was actually yep. horrible. <laughs> so I gotta say, I just I disagree. I disagree with the you. meme, the scene, the scene when they're like on the, like the scene on meme. like at a restaurant outside, and they're like meeting with like their yeah, so... their like manager for the first time, and it's cutting between people really fast. Like these cuts are quick, man. Oh, wow. And I didn't notice it while watching it the first time, but then when I saw the clip on Twitter, I was like, wait, was that really how it was in the movie? <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe how fast those cuts were. Did you but watch it, though? After- in the mo- No, but while watching the movie, I wasn't. Oh. I didn't notice it. Did you, Zach? I did not notice it. And that this is because that scene, that, that scene is about them getting signed yeah. to... Oh to what or, or or meeting with the person to get signed yeah. so it's like the characters are basically like oh my god this is our moment yeah we can't screw this up every there's like tension yeah there's also a lot of like uh the subtext of a business meeting where like people are kind of like looking at each other like do we do this yeah like, huh? it was like you know they're sort of like eyes this reaction this reaction so like, i'm gonna say this then yeah, this yeah, this yeah. it was really quick and i don't know i thought it was legible but i could see what people's complaints i thought it was totally legible in fact I, I I don't know. I, I'm bad at this because I feel like we're both video editors, so like feel yeah, we have the authority like really to say tough. whether or I not it was good do. editing. I think you guys do. <laughs> I liked it. I, I, I would say I liked it. I think it's just the people who didn't like it are freaking stuck in the past. They need to get on TikTok and get with the future of video. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they just don't understand That's that true. like the, no I gotta get on TikTok because it's a no. movie about Queen. No, I mean, I mean, the, it won the award for best editing. I think whoever gave it the award, they must be on TikTok. They understand that video <laughs> editing has just gotten a lot faster. Um, okay, so there's, there's a bunch of problems with there's Queen. Problems. The fact the that movie? the fact that Bohemian Rhapsody won for editing doesn't feel like that movie should win for editing. Uh, I just don't get why that was a standout yeah, feature no. of that film. And another, it is weird. First Man, the movie First Man with Ryan Gosling, the mm-hmm. Gaz, my my, I call him yeah. my Gaz. He he basically, uh, or sorry, that film, visual effects. That film what? Wait, you said yeah. that that film won for best visual effects. Oh, so this is like a 1967 style, you know, for the the moon landing mm-hmm. style approach. They have like the raw gritty like 1967 film stock over the whole thing cool mm-hmm. all of us can buy the 60 dollar plug-in that does that, that yeah that's not the work the work was like you know the rocket ship and whatever but i have seen like rocket movies already and this one did not stand out in any particular visual way. And this is sitting next to Black Panther, the, the Marvel film. Yeah, like that, that's what those movies are. The art yeah, movie. it's true. If you want to like poke at a, if you want to poke at a Marvel film, like there are so many people sitting there planning out the fight sequences and planning out all the stuff all on paper before it even gets to like a wireframe yeah. or anything that becomes what you see. It's like that is beautiful choreography and dance and whatever you want to call it. But then they pick this movie. It just seems very like I don't know whose box they were checking there. But wait, who were yeah. the ones in the category against this movie? Oh wait, are we... search. I sh- um, visual effects because that was disappointing. I was disappointed. It. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, I can't believe Black Panther didn't get anything. That's crazy. For Pete's sake, by the way, it's for Pete's sake day. Today's Tuesday, February 26th. It's for wow. Pete's sake day. Uh, the creator of, uh, I don't know, it's a real holiday. It's Levi Strauss day. Wow. So put wow. on your blue jeans, folks. Wow. It's carnival day. So maybe get out there and uh, <laughs> hop on a ride. It's also National Personal Chef Day. Oh, and Pistachio Day. Have you guys been watching?
watching this Jada Pinkett Smith Red Table Talk? Wait a second. No, what's it's that? It's also it's also Thermos Bottle Day. Oh, that's great for what? me. Really? I I recently got into thermoses, and I got to tell you, I'm totally floored by the technology. Yeah. I know it's What's not your... new. I recently heard that those swell bottles—is that what it is? Well, swell. I don't think those are thermoses, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, they said that even if you if you fill it with hot or cold water or medium lukewarm water, and you put it in the fridge, it will not change temperature. Yeah, that's kind of how thermoses are. You have a thermos too, Zach? I am like a thermos evangelist for this one specific brand. Can I drop oh. the brand? Yeah, drop it. All right. Let's see if we can get a sponsor. Uh, it's I, I don't want to say it wrong. Zojirushi? Okay. What is it? Zojirushi. Z-O-J-I-R-U-S-H-I. Oh, okay. It's got a little, a little like elephant on it. Anyway. Oh, I see it. Taking a look at this. So, I gotta say, like, I, I'm not just trying to talk about thermoses because we're talking about thermoses. I like it's thermos day. It's I, the day to talk I mean, about. This is the day. This thing. Okay, so every day, I fill, I like take iced coffee out for the day, whatever. But if you are someone who just like wants like a like a water next to your bed at night, I mm. feel like the thermos is like the most perfect thing because never thought about that. I'm not so like skeeved out by like dust in the room landing in my open cup or my glass next to like i don't really care about that but if you were someone who was like no nah, this water feels old and you're like you're chucking like half half glasses out all the time in the sink you're like yeah this is old yeah. water this is old water you will never waste water again if you put it in a thermos because <laughs> it's just so like time capsuled out and then the last thing i'll say is i put ice in this thing and 48 hours later what <laughs> the ice is still intact and the water <laughs> is freezing cold. I, yeah, I, 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 I kind of buried the lead say. on this. I swear to God. <laughs> Two whole Dude. days, if I don't open it, not even once, that ice that is, is basically like 80% of the form that it started out as. Or that is really incredible. I think incredible. I, uh, I might get into thermoses. Therm- I've recently <laughs> been putting my morning coffee in a thermos and it just stays warm forever. To the last drop. Wow. Hours the other thing later. is, it's no. in my hand. It's in my hand right now. Just yeah. li- listen to this little, like, this little, like, lock click. Ready? Okay. There you go. Sounded wow. pretty satisfying. Pretty nice. Right? One more time. Ready? And then here's, like, I'll just, I'll just do the close. Right? Here's the close. That's wow. it. Pretty great. It's pretty great. That's crazy. <laughs> that was quite the ad. It's also Nash- World Spay Day, so spay and neuter your, your animals. Spay your mm. bay. Spay your bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. <laughs> is that trending? Uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. But it is National Spay Day, or World Spay Day, actually. It's Holy global. smokes. The world? The world's everybody's spaying. Uh, you, uh, what else you want to talk about? The red table? Yeah, That's I don't what you know. To talk about? I, I was just wondering. It's if got fifty k it's... searches right now. Yeah, it is what number nine. What is there number, anything good about it? What do you? No, I was just wondering if you guys had like watched that show. I've been meaning to, and it's no. also just had a lot of like publicity around it. Um, the news that I heard about that show a while back was that actually. Um, What's the daughter's name again? Uh, Willow Smith admitted to her family because the plot is like, it's not a plot. It's just like kind of reality show where they sit around a table, red table, and they have like a family talk. So it's like a generational thing where the grandma's there, Jada's there, uh, Willow's there. Um, no boys allowed, it seems like, so most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but also... Um, so anyways, Willow had admitted to Jada that when Whip Your Hair Back and Forth came out, she was so young and, like, emotionally fragile and, like, didn't understand fame or, like, what it meant to have a number one song or whatever. She, like, started cutting herself. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. And it was, like, she hadn't told her mom up until that point. So her and her grandma or whatever are like, what? And, um, and so, like, it's just, like, really deep stuff like that, that they have these, like, open conversations about life. And, 
And so, yeah, I don't know. There, it's at number nine right now, and I and I think yeah. Jordan Woods is on it, which is like, isn't that Kylie Jenner's best friend or something? Yeah, I heard there was a recent falling out with like her friend that was living in her house oh, had sex with like her sister's boyfriend. Uh, I don't know. Oh. I don't get. I don't get mixed up in the Kardashian drama. I feel like that's just as messed up as the Trump drama. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel like it's like just like a different genre of drama I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. I, I would I don't know anything about this. I get sucked like, up in YouTube drama. Like if you want to tell me about like Alyssa Violet so doing much. something, I'm, I'm it is I'm, really I'm, crazy. We were talking about this FaZe the Banks other day. doing something, I'll listen to that. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day, the way Pull up some drama like, alert. There's so many like I don't know. It's just crazy because you can I'm in so my own deep. echo chamber of drama. Yeah, you can get so d- deep in these dramas. And I don't know. I guess I just had seen them. Uh, when we were talking about it, it was like I had went down a whole entire funnel. And then you had went down a whole entire funnel. and But we both didn't know each other's funnels. And it's just crazy because, like, I wonder if you could divide the population up based on what drama they're following. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> And like, what would that say about us? I like that idea. Um, yeah, I'd love to see I'm, some visual graphs or whatever based on drama. Yeah, the drama bubbles. Yeah. There's plenty of them. There's a lot of them. I would love some big science on that. Hmm. Well, let's wrap up the show. Yeah. How should we end it? Anything good happening in anybody's uh, world? Um, I got a, I got a robot vacuum. That's about it. Oh, oh dude, cool. how do you like it? I love uh, mine. Well, I, you got one too? Yeah. I feel kind of ashamed because it's such a like embellishment. But I got to say, I just want to – I think this is something that's like if you're living in 2019 and you don't have some robot in your life, like you're just yeah. kind of denying yourself That's kind of true. A little bit of a, like the coolest toy you can get. Anyway, tell me about yours. How do you yeah. like it? Uh, no, I, d- I used to have one and my cats were fine with it. And then I got one now and I think I caught my cat like at the wrong time because he was cleaning <laughs> it, cleaning himself next to it when I turned it on. And so, oh, uh, um, he got really puffy and I went to go pick him up out of the way. And it was like, just never, ever pick up a cat when they're even just like remotely agitated about anything. Cause like Mm -hmm. I lifted up my arm and my cat was, I was like, 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 I don't know, wiggling my arm around to get my cat off of it because its claws were just so embedded in my arm. I felt like, I felt like my arm was on fire or something. I was trying to fan it off, but the cat was on instead of fire. It was like (laughs) insane. (laughs) Cat fire. Help. I put it like ah, it was not good. But um, he's a big cat too. He's a big boy. It was. <laughs> I mean, what's, his, what's his name? Thurston. Thurston. Oh, Thurston. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that was yeah. not good. But I don't know. Actually, this is actually news. Just now, like this or tonight or something. I just got this message. I don't know if it's like it just hit the news, but is isn't there something going on with like um, Amazon where they just got in trouble for fake reviews like it's an actual um lawsuit or something that's happening with them right now did Mm, you hear about that let's see because when i got this robot vacuum i definitely bought it because it had like the top reviews like well i mean i think manipulating reviews is like a thing that's like a whole like backdoor industry like it is like, you know, when you give like a negative review on Amazon, like the company will email you and contact you nonstop trying to get you to change your review. Well, not even that. Like what the lawsuit is about is that there was a supplement company that paid this company called um, AmazonReviews.com <laughs> <laughs> to, to, keep, to keep its reviews between 4.5 and 5 stars. Just to, mm. to monitor its, like, rates or whatever, or whatever. It's, like, reviews. Mm. So that's the kind of shady business that I guess is going on all the time. And maybe this is just, like, big enough to actually require mm. some action. Mm. Well, so it's not on the Google trending searches, so I don't know about it. It, it, was, like, <laughs> no, it was, like, a... 
<laughs> I, this just happened. It was like from The Verge or something. I if posted it, it. If you want to talk about Detective Pikachu <laughs> with 50k oh, circuit I searches, do. we could talk about that. I just quick. saw that. I don't really have anything to say about you it other do? than other than I will probably well, see it. Can we talk about eventually? Can we talk about like basically? I mean, I know this is like one wave of shock ago, but like the character design was a little like people were surprised that uh, Pokemon have fur, which I was not yeah. surprised. I immediately was like, "This." Do you think they were gonna have sort of Muppet skin? What do you think that of Pikachu's? What do you think Pikachu would be like smooth like a dolphin? I always thought it would have fur. I, I guess thought Pikachu would have like micro, like sort of like yeah. velvety fur, really, which is what it kind of has. I this thought it was like a stuffed point. animal. Oh yeah, I guess I could kind of see any combination of these. Maybe like sponge but... material. Detective but Pikachu. Was... <laughs> he looks cute. <laughs> Didn't you say you thought he was sexy? Oh yeah, because it's Ryan Reynolds', Reynolds voice. Address. Oh, just because it's his voice. <laughs> 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 um, mixed up the wrong crowd, that kind of thing. Look, you guys, it's perfect for a podcast. I can talk to Pokemon. And if you want to find your pops, we're gonna need each other. No, I don't need a Pokemon. What about a world class detective? <laughs> ah, my clues. What is all this? Harry. All right, I'm stopping it. Are it we watching like this movie? Be... Is this a good movie? I mean, I'm gonna see it, but it kind of really reminds me of like the Super Mario Brothers movie from the early '90s, where like they took like Mario Mario elements, but then just made a completely other thing. You know what I mean? Yep. Kind of feels like it's that. One of the greatest films. Of yeah. The time. <laughs> it's uh... good. <laughs> Word of God, the fact. I mean, the the amount of like critical analysis of that film that is out there on the internet it's all <laughs> worth reading every say you thought you read you're like i read one already I need to, no. no read yeah. like three more there's the so history good. of the making of it the behind the scenes is all funny so much. yeah it's a, but doesn't it seem like the same thing and it's also an, a nintendo property right or is it not i don't what, know the, the no film? like pokemon is that a nintendo property uh ooh. I almost want to say it's something like, else. Okay. I, I, I want to say it's like a, a joint ownership between Nintendo and Disney, but I could totally be wrong mm-hmm. about that. Let's see. I don't know. But I was just, if it is, I just want to say, like, wow, Nintendo fucked up again. Just letting people make a weird Did you guys movie. Watch I don't know. Spider Verse? I haven't seen it yet. Did you, Zach? Oh, I it loved it. Good. Oh, it was amazing. Ryan, I can't believe you. Yes, I haven't been to the so, theater in a bit. Total I do, what I appreciated you, most about that think? movie that was that it was probably the first movie ever made about the metaverse. About, like, conceptualizing the metaverse. Yep. It, was, yeah. it was really great for that reason. You mean within comics or just anything? What is it? Are you, the question is, do you mean, like comics in the the metaverse of the marvel universe i'm talking about like uh, yeah quantum physics like like creating a an imagine like an imaginative fiction about a like a concept of like multiple realities like Mm -hmm. uh i mean i guess it's been done before but it was it was a weird way that they did it because they mixed it in with like the metaverse of the of, of um a particular character Right. It, it looks cool. It yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's out on DVD. Actually, it was like trending yesterday because I think it's like it's finally being released. Um, Try to find the highest quality. Yeah. When you watch that, it I will. Nothing less. It's so so good. Highest quality one. I love that. Movie. Highest um, quality copy. Else? Oh yeah. I definitely will. I, I I love animation. I know it's just like a mix of all kinds of different animations. So I know I like it. I just didn't. Just didn't watch it. Just didn't make it there. It's all right. It's all I right. saw it. I saw it in the theater. It was. All right. We're going to wrap up now. Thing. I just want to say. <laughs> Nintendo, oh, whoops. Sorry. Nintendo owns 33% of Pokemon. Uh, okay. Because I did the research. Okay. Okay. 30, that's a pretty good amount. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll see if this is another Super Mario Brothers movie conundrum. Or if it's actually good. See if Ryan pulls through. I bet he's, do you think Pikachu's going to have some abs? 
Nah. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be great. You don't think they're gonna slip like a like an ab joke in there? They're definitely going to. Because he's really cocky. He could use cocky, <laughs> isn't he? Is that a correlation? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he's kind of like he has like a cocky attitude, which is something that I did not expect from Pikachu's behavior, personality. Yeah. So anyways, like that was just a question. Ready when you come, you come yeah. Yeah, walks down the street says, Why am I short of attention? Got a short little stand of attention. All right. Um, thanks for being on, Zach. Hey, thanks for inviting me. I'd love to come back. Yeah, maybe next week, next SEO show, we'll have two Zachs. Oh, that would be Zach. fun. We'll be the metaverse girl. <laughs> we... You're the metaverse of Zach. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Oh my metaverse. God, that'd be great. That'd be a great intro. <laughs> yeah. Also, I just think because we both have the same name, maybe there's a little mini segment we can do. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. Ar- around that. I that's a really know. good idea. Oh, I feel like Zach, I'll talk to Zach, Zach about that. Other Zach okay. would be really into that. Yeah, I think Zach like would. Some kind of competition or like a A versus B type thing. I don't know. You, I leave it to you. I like I'll think about the name. Yeah. I'm going to have to think of the name yeah. first. It's like Zach Attack. Yeah. Zach, I mean, yeah. All right. Just if you need sounds, we got to bring the sound effects to that, that segment. Anyway. Okay, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll be back soon. If you listened to the 6.5 hour Megapod um, from a couple weeks ago, thanks for listening to that. It was a great experiment. Maybe we'll do another one. Uh, yeah. Anything else you guys want to say? That's better. What? Uh-